key of C? That's not bluegrass. Hey folks, I know I just did a lick video, but it was basically an ad for my Instagram page, Jazz and Grass. I figured I owe you the real thing at this point. I am a benevolent YouTuber. Anyway, I remember when I was trying to flat pick and looking for things online, I could find tons of info on the key of G, but very little on the keys of C and D. And I personally want to do a better job of giving you more info on those other common keys. So today we're doing 10 bluegrass licks to tag songs in the key of C. Before we get going, I want you to know that I'm going to be pulling from lots of different sort of techniques and genres and artists. And that this is a really important facet of bluegrass. Bluegrass absorbs lots of different influences. Other genres have trouble with this, but bluegrass can take it. And maybe that's the reason why the term bluegrass has been so muddied as of late. And lastly, when I call out an artist, it's something in the style of that artist. If you want licks that don't have that outside influence, or maybe they're no for no transcriptions of things that famous people have played, you can find that in my other videos. But here in this video, I want to bring you things that maybe you've seen a little bit less or things that you've heard but you haven't seen people write out. So here we go. So Doc Watson is of course a classic flat picker, but he was actually a lot more than that too. He played electric guitar in his younger years, he was a capable singer, he did fingerstyle, he played a wonderful banjo as well, um, he was a songwriter, but most importantly I think that people used his use of the lead acoustic guitar to justify lead guitar as a whole in bluegrass. For most of you that's super old news, but if you didn't know that, go listen to Doc already. <laughs> So obviously the thing about this lick is returning to that pedal tone in the first measure. Basically every other note is E in the first measure. In the early days of flat picking, this was an easier way to travel up the neck without having to go into a completely closed position. You can hear a lot of it in older recordings of fast tunes, but that in no way means that it's dated. People still use it all the time, so this is definitely something we want to include into our playing. After that first measure is over, that's when I start to modernize the lick just a little bit. Um, to big doc fans, the, the triplet and some of the note choice surrounding the, the end of that like probably seem out of place and you're right they're definitely um embellished in more of a modern way. It's also worth noting that those last four notes of this lick purposefully alternate between two different strings back and forth. You get it by now, right? Doc's the man. I've done a bad job of including him in the past in my videos. I have no reason why because I'm a huge fan. So so here's another lick that's kind of in the style of what he might play. <laughs> I covered a lick like this before in one of my videos called 10 Advanced Licks for the Key of C, I think. And the reason I included it is because everyone uses this in the key of C. I don't want to be that guy, but it's a good way to waste time and also play a line that's not boring. Just to be clear and describe the lick, it's basically two chromatic runs, and then I do that minor third to the major third thing. I finish off that arpeggio, and that's it. Here's another piece of super standard bluegrass lingo. People include the beginning of this tag over C chords just all the time. So much. So what you're hearing is something we talk about all the time on this channel. It's that dirty third, minor third to major third. But normally we're doing it on the same string. In this lick, it's on two different strings. That means the notes get to ring out. They really grind against each other. And it creates that really cool, kind of nasty sound. After that, in this lick, you get a bunch of standard C stuff. No surprises. Let's move on. Bluegrass and country style like Telecaster licks, they have a big history of being traded and shared between players in the scene. So for this video, I've included two different country licks. Here's the first one. This lick is built off of sixth, which is really standard in the country scene. One thing that I've changed is that the last pair of sixths, they, they actually appear on open strings, so you have to do just a little bit of cross picking to get them out, and I think that roots this lick a little bit more in the bluegrass scene. All right, so the second country lick does a lot of other popular country things. It does horizontal pentatonic scales, and it ends with a bend. <laughs> Now 
not a whole lot more to say. How to really sell those horizontal pentatonic scales or those big dipper shapes, if you've seen that in my videos before, is to really get that phrasing across in the right way. Make it feel like it's not a pentatonic scale. Although I guess that goes for pentatonic scales on the whole. And then for that third, whenever you bend up to the third of a major chord, it's just gonna sound like country. So of course, chord tones will always sound really good, and this lick tries really hard to lean on each chord tone as we come up to it and pass it. If you're looking for why this might seem familiar or be caught in your ear, you definitely see it a little bit in swing music. You definitely see it a lot in gypsy jazz, actually, whether it's a minor or a major tune. They do this kind of thing all the time. It's basically rocking out of the chord tone and rocking back in, and it feels really good. And it, I don't know, in this kind of uneasy way, though. Uh, it's definitely something that is worth including in your playing if you want to be more melodic, because it feels very melodic. It doesn't feel like that bluesy hot style. Acknowledging the classics, it's always super important in bluegrass. Now this is a fiddle tune tag that you've definitely heard before. Take a look at it. There's a million flashy licks in the world, but sometimes, you know, a tag like this is going to do a better job than anything else. It's well constructed, time tested diatonic, and it's been in everyone's ears since we were kids. Everyone already knows these are my favorites. Go ahead, enjoy. Be careful with the pull-offs and hammer-ons. Watch your pick direction. Make sure that everything's nice and even. You definitely want to slow this down and then speed it up. You want to practice these nice and even triplets. Um, the look really falls apart when you try to do it too fast and then your triplets are uneven. You're not convincing anyone. Got to get a minor pentatonic lick in here somewhere, right? Here's something to represent the blues influence in bluegrass. It's been there since the very beginning. <laughs> This is another easy lick to explain. Start off with a triplet, it's all minor pentatonic as I go down, and then I include that major third right before the very last note. That's it. All right, to finish off here, here's a little bit of a jazzier lick. Bluegrass has been kind of mingling with jazz for the majority of its history now. Why wouldn't it? I mean, they're both improvisational genres. <laughs> So I changed that chord progression just a little bit so I could get in a certain kind of line. And now this lick does a lot of things that you would expect a, a jazz line to do. I do a small enclosure around the third. I jump up a sixth. I land on the flat nine. As I come down, I pass that dominant seventh, that flatted six, all kind of flavor tones. Do another enclosure around the third. Jump down a sixth. I'm going to slide into the third of the C chord. Um, feels very good. Really interesting. Um, kind of phrasing compared to what we normally get in bluegrass. This has some jumps and some leaps, and it's really exciting when you include that in your playing, especially when people don't expect it. All right, everyone, if you like taking a lesson from the biggest, baddest Billy Goat in the barnyard, there's a couple things you can do. First of all, I mean, you're right here on YouTube already. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment, give this video a like. You can do all those things. Um, if you actually care, you can go check me out on, uh, what, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all those normal places. You can follow me or do whatever they do on those sites. Um, of course, if you want any more, you can go to my website, Lessons with Marcel.com. There you can sign up for Skype lessons. You can also check out all the free stuff that's on there. If you can't get more of me, you're going to want to check out Jazz and Grass on Instagram and the Jazz and Grass podcast. Those are free licks every day and then a podcast once a week where we just talk about all kinds of guitar, music, and other weird stuff. Anyway, I guess I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.